Well, I've got her filled up. And my pre-flight's all done. About ready to taxi out for departure. If you've never flown in a light plane before, it's going to be a real experience for you, I'm sure. But it's going to give us a different perspective of those five locations we looked at on the map. Let's go. Okay, you ready to go? Let's get up and look at these five locations and get a bird's eye view of looking for location. Flying in a 140 Cessna, tail dragger type airplane, two seater, flies real good. We need about 50 miles an hour to take off. You can see right away as we start to climb, we'll climb to 4,000 feet to look at the target areas we've picked on the map. But you can see there's a lot of crop changes, a lot of edges, tree belts. The higher we get, the more we'll be able to see this aerial view of looking over your trap line will really help you to find the best areas to set in. There we are coming in up on Red Lake. You can tell that's the skinny end or kind of the western end of Red Lake where all three of those cricks kind of come into that little point. You'll notice there's some crop change ups here in the foreground leading right into the target area, Red Lake itself. The lake's a large marsh. It's got a lot of rat houses in it. Lots of cover along the edge. Lots of crop changes coming in. On the back side of the lake, you see them long rows coming in from the horizon all the way into the lake. Those are travel lanes and predators are using coming in. There's a farmer's house down there. Okay, we're kind of on the south side of the lake now. You can see again all the crop changes coming in. Oh, there's a big group of trees. That's where that Anderson Creek comes in. Real good location there because that's the longest creek that runs into the marsh. Buku habitat down in there for fox and coyote. You can see how long and windy that creek is. Between them two roads is a mile, so we can see a lot of country at once. There's another farm place there. I got permission on that farm. Lots of edges coming into that creek. Really easy to find locations. There's a kind of a trapezoid-shaped field there. We'll zoom in on it. That's an excellent location because it's between the target area and the interstate. We're going to set in that field. That's where our first location will be when we get on the ground. As we kind of pan over here a little bit, you'll see another set of buildings. That's a feedlot. Excellent habitat area for fox, for coon coming up in there, silage piles in there, prey species habitat supreme. Also, think about the smell attraction. There's a feedlot again from the top. Notice the interstate coming in, bisecting it. Lots of smell coming off the feedlot. There's our second target area. We're kind of far from it now, about eight miles out. That's Mud Lake. It won't take us long to get there, though. You notice there's a few groups of trees around a couple miles from the lake. You start to see, even though it's kind of hazy out today, you'll start to see some crop changes. There we go. As we get closer, you can see them crop changes coming right into the lake. You'll see a couple dugouts here on the south side. Dugouts are just another name for uh, man-made stock watering ponds. Real good focal places to set for coyote and fox. Lots of habitat around this marsh, especially on the north side, where we're going to swing around to the north side here. Here we go, swinging around to the north. As you look down to the bottom of the picture, you'll see all that habitat grass. There's even an old house down there. Let's get a close-up on that old house. There it is, kind of a thumb-type field. Excellent location right there. And on this side of the house, or on the bottom part of that screen, there's another real good spot for a set, and that's where we're going to put our set in. There's that strip field again. And there's a pair of dugouts. One, the second one, is right along that fence row. I caught six coyotes there last year. Excellent location. As you look up in between the wing struts, there's that dugout again. And then there's a gravel pit. I think them coyotes are coming from the mud lake to them dugouts to that gravel pit. Excellent locations. We come into target area number three is the Smith Creek drainage. This is just a small feeder creek that leads into Smith Creek, but you can notice how these creeks wind through all this country, drain off a lot of predators get them predators moving that direction. Them long cricks are habitat change areas. 
There's a Smith Creek drainage. Really winds and twists, bisects a lot of good country. They're kind of in the middle of the picture. You'll notice there's a lot of big green fields and kind of some trees along the creek. That's some excellent habitat right in that area. And that's, in fact, a target area that we're going to go into and set. We're going to set the tree belt that's to the north of the creek, kind of just coming up to the edge of your picture here on the right-hand side. We'll fly over it again from a different angle. Here we go. As we zoom in, you can see that batch of trees just about in the middle of your screen. There's an old house down there, and then there's kind of a fallow field next to it. But the fence row that's on this side of that fallow field runs long, all the way from that creek, two, three miles down there, the longest fence row. There it is again, up close. There's the old house, there's the trees, and there's that fallow field. We're gonna be sitting right in that corner of the field, right here. Look at all the crop changes there. Excellent fox country. Swing down in, there's the White River. You can see as it comes in, it's almost like a delta where it enters the Missouri River. We're looking for long draws coming in to the white, intersecting the white, intersecting the Missouri. Draws that go from the white to the Missouri, saddles over. Look at that creek, that kind of draw going down through there. On the west side of the river, we're looking for access too. There's that tree belt right between the wing struts. There's a little creek coming in. Kind of from the right, we're going to be sitting right next to that little draw where it goes into them trees. Notice how close it is to the Missouri River. There it is. You can see how windy it is. Back and forth, back and forth. Incredible. Coming up on the last target area now, the Dave Frame Ranch. You'll notice between the wing struts there's some trees. And if you look out ahead of the plane, ahead of the wing struts, you'll see that line of trees kind of running. That's the drainage that runs through Dave Frame's ranch. Unbelievable habitat down in there. There's no roads leading into it hardly. You, 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 the main thing on this west side of the river, you get in western country, you got to look for access. There's a lot of good habitat, but you got to have access into it. That's where the plane's handy too. You can find where the roads go, the trails, where the gates are. There's a nice dugout. Look at the draws leading into there. That's a coyote hot spot, I'll bet. If the guy could get to it, probably need a helicopter to get in there, or a horse. Boy, that creek's long. We want to get about three miles from the white, and we'll get down into a big dog town. Really excellent habitat down in there. Bobcats running that, mule deer, whitetails, antelope, rattlesnakes galore down in there, but the habitat's there. This is where we're going to make our set, right where that big draw from the east meets the main day frame draw. That's where we're going to set. That's a coyote hot spot down in there. Further up the draw, there's a, there it is, there's a corral down in there, kind of a focal feature. And there's a couple cricks coming together down by that corral. Lots of crop change-ups, lots of edge. That's why you can't just set edge. we got to look for target areas. If you just start setting fence rows, look at all the fence rows that are out there. We've flown a a lot of miles in just the last 10 minutes. Let's head back in. Chamberlain area traffic, Cessna 3677 Victor, short final for runway 31, Chamberlain.